welcome to another informative episode of aws solution architect associate exam question series on exam tricks and tips channel please like share and subscribe to get regular updates on new episode releases welcome to episode 17 we'll cover questions 81 to 85 in this episode for questions 1 to 80 please refer to previous episodes of this series let's get started question number 81 a business outsources its marketplace analytics management to a third party partner the vendor requires restricted programmatic access to the company's account resources all necessary policies have been established to ensure acceptable access which new component provides the vendor most secure access to the account so let's understand what is the problem here so what we have is there is a business who's outsourcing its marketplace analytics management to a third party partner so we have three entities now aws the business and the third party partner now the vendor requires some restricted access to company's accounts resources all necessary policies are established for the access and we want to know what option they should choose out of the four given options so let's go through each option one by one and then analyze what's the best option for providing vendor the access first one is option a create i am user i am user with credentials poses a definitely a security risk if compromised you should always go for a role rather than an i am user these user credentials can be accidentally leaked or misused so you are heavily relying on a particular user in third party partners organization and if something goes wrong by mistake by accident then it it is not going to help it's not secure so option a is incorrect option b it says implement a service control policy scp now scp defines permission at a particular account level but they wouldn't grant access to the vendor so you cannot basically use scp to grant access to vendors that is it's it's not used for that purpose so option b is wrong because it doesn't have that characteristics or usage i will skip option c so sso can improve access management within a particular organization so for example uh, if you implement sso within the business in example here it will have a better control and a simplified way of accessing multiple application using a single sign authentication where you only sign in once an authenticated ones but you have access to various application that are within your organization but you will never give sso access to external parties external parties will always get a reduced access this is against security policies of an organization so option d is also wrong what we are left with is option c it says let's use a cross account role with an external id now we will do a deep dive on what exactly this role is from an identity question perspective whenever you have to choose uh how you can access certain resources you should always go for anything that has a role because then you can define the role and underneath the, and you can have policies on the role itself and that's the most efficient way of providing access in case of uh, aws and for that matter in any uh, you know any other technology as long as you are picking up something equivalent to the role so answer for this question is option c use a cross account role with an external id let's do a deep dive on how this particular option satisfies all the requirements specified in the problem scenario so first one is reduced credential exposure basically we do not want vendor to have the same access as the business users themselves the option c the vendor doesn't require i am user credentials eliminating the risk for compromising the access with this solution we are providing granular permissions i am policies attached to this role define specific actions the vendor can perform and that will minimize the access so you can control then what the user can do by using the policies attached to the role and that's what i meant earlier when i explained whenever you have to use a, i am access identity problem you should always go for role because then you can attach policies to it which you can control what what the users having that role can do and cannot do and the third which is a specific uh, feature of this solution and this scenario is external id verification an external id that is a unique identifier from vendor system adds another layer of security by ensuring the role can be only assumed by authorized vendor so that's how the way this is implemented is you are not providing any am credential but then you might use say authentication id employee id or network id which is sitting on the vendor's uh, system and that id is used for cross authentication across the account first of all that frees you from giving your credentials from your services and also kind of ensures a link between your, your business and vendors by having an id that is has some sort of accountability 
this is how this solution option C use cross account rule with an external ID satisfies all the requirements that are mentioned and outlined in the problem scenario. This particular question, I thought it would be important to tell you how we can implement this solution as this is a quite a unique scenario. So first step will be to create an IAM role in company's account with the necessary permission for vendors marketplace analytics task. So that is happening in your company's AWS account. The second step will be then configure an external ID in the IAM role trust policy. So this external ID is coming from your vendor's system. This external ID should uniquely identify the vendor system authorized to assume the role. So that's second step. So you have done a mapping of role to the ID. And the third step, which is crucial is you have to share the role ARN with the vendor. The vendor can then use AWS SDK or AWS CLI to assume the role using external ID gaining temporary and it's very important temporary and secure access to the company's resources with the permission defined in the role policies. So that's the third step and it's very important. And if you see this is a temporary access, this is not going to be forever. So that's, uh, you know, that will ensure that it's secure and it's not long lived. That's it on this particular question. Let's move on to the next question. Question number 82, a business uses two Amazon EC2 instances to run dynamic web application. The organization has its own SSL certificate, which is used to complete SSL termination on each instance. Recently, there has been an increase in traffic and operations team concluded that SSL encryption decryption is causing the web server compute capacity to surpass its limit. What should a solution architect do to optimize the web performance of an application? So let's understand what do we have here in terms of problem description. So we have a business and it has two EC2 instances and it is running a dynamic web application. Please remember it is dynamic web application. That's your keyword. And organization has its own SSL certificates, which is used to complete SSL termination on each of the instance. Now there is in increase in the traffic. That means you need to do more SSL encryption decryption in terms of requests. And that is taking up compute capacity of the server. And it is surpassing the limit. Now we need a solution which would resolve this situation and optimize the performance of the overall solution. If if you now work backwards, there is a problem because compute capacity is being used. For what? To decrypt and encrypt the SSL encryption. That means we need a solution which will somehow minimize the time taken or the compute capacity taken for SSL encryption decryption. And that's the key here. Let's see what option gives us that answer and then we'll go from there. So let's uh, let's start analyzing. So option A, it says let's create a new SSL certificate using a AWS certificate manager ACM. Install the ACM certificate on each instance. So the key here is we install the certificate on each instance. Now, it wouldn't address the core issue because the core issue is that there is time taken to encrypt and decrypt the SSL. And by just installing the certificate manager on both the EC2 instances is not going to reduce that time or the compute capacity. So this is not a correct option. Option B is the next one in the list. It says let's use a S3 bucket, migrate the SSL certificate to S3 bucket and configure the EC2 instance to reference the bucket of our SSL termination. Now, how can storing SSL certificate in S3 bucket will help with the improved performance because EC2 instance cannot directly reference S3 bucket for SSL termination anyway. And the main point here is just shifting SSL certificate somewhere else is not going to help with encryption decryption of that SSL, which is currently taking compute capacity. So this is incorrect again. Both the option A and B are absolutely doing nothing uh, in the direction of saving the compute capacity or some sort of automatic encryption decryption. So option B is wrong. Let's see option C. Option C says, let's create another EC2 instance as a proxy server, migrate the SSL certificate to the new instance and configure it to direct connections to existing EC2 instances. So we are basically saying we add one more EC2 instance and that will solely be dedicated to do encryption decryption for SSL termination. And this is not correct it is basically going to add complexity and the cost. EC2's job is not to do SSL termination. So this is wrong. However, this is a nice stepping stone towards the actual solution. Now, if you look at option D, that's the option which is suitable in this case. 
And what it does is it says, let's import the SSL certificate into a AWS certificate manager, ACM, and create an application load balancer with an HTTPS listener that uses the SSL certificates from ACM. Now, this is the correct option. It's, uh, this is basically combination of option C with option A, where you have two services. One is your ACM, which is the key, and you have ALB, which is going to now do the job of SSL termination process. So ALB can offload the termination process from EC2 instances, which can then help to increase the compute capacity available for each web application. By creating ALB with HTTPS listener and using SSL certificate from ACM, the ALB can handle SSL termination process by leaving the EC2 instances free to focus on running the web application. So this solution takes the job of encryption decryption from your web servers, which is running on two EC2 instances, and they are free now to serve as web application. And the compute capacity from there end is now not being spent on SSL termination. So that's the answer. Option D is the correct answer for this particular question. Let's understand in detail how this particular solution is addressing all the requirements. So first is offload uh, offloading of SSL processing. And that's very important. So by using ALB to handle SSL terminations and encryption decryption, it takes the burden off or from the individual EC2 instances. And this frees up the computing resources on the web servers. So that we already discussed. The second point, which is very important as well, scalability. ALB can handle increased traffic by distributing workload. And we have seen the problem becomes severe when there is increase in the traffic, which is what is outlined in the problem. And the scalability aspect of ALB is going to help with that high traffic. It's going to ensure, you know, smoother performance, even when the traffic peaks up. The third thing is the centralized certificate management, which is the second half of the solution. When you use ACM, that simplifies the certificate management. You can easily deploy, renew, and rotate certificates from a central location. So what ACM allows you is a better management of certificates in a central location. And obviously, the services like ALB can easily talk to it. So this is how the solution is suitable for this problem scenario. Look, Let's look at this article from AWS, which talks about how AWS uh, Elastic Load Balancing, which is ALB, can be used for supporting SSL termination. This will give you confidence around that this is the right solution we have gone for. I will provide you a link in the video description to go through this. You can read this article and understand more about how you can use ALB for supporting SSL termination. From an exam perspective, what you need to remember is you can offload the job of SSL termination from a compute resource like AC EC2 to ALB by and also by storing the certificates in ACM. Overall, that solution will give you a much more optimized way of using SSL certificates and it will free your compute instances to do what they're meant to do rather than keep encrypting, decrypting SSL certificates. So that's it on this question. Let's move on to the next question. Number 83, a corporation is doing an evaluation of an existing workload placed on AWS using the AWS Well Architected Framework. The evaluation discovered a public facing website operating on the same Amazon EC2 instance as a freshly installed Microsoft Active Directory domain controller to support other services. A solution architect must offer a new design that increases architecture security and reduces the administrative burden on IT workers. What recommendation should the solution architect make? We have a corporation and they are trying to evaluate existing workload that they have placed in AWS. So they are already in AWS. Now, as part of evaluation, they saw that there is a website on the same Amazon EC2 instance, which is public facing and instant as a freshly installed Microsoft Active Control Domain. So you have a public facing website and you have Microsoft Active Control Domain on the same server. Now, this obviously poses a security risk and we need a solution to improve this by making changes to the architecture and we have few options here let's see which options are suitable and which options are correct uh let me see what we have so let's see option b so option b says let's create another ec2 instance in the same subnet and reinstall active directory on it uninstall active directory from the existing server now basically what you're trying to do here is you're trying to separate the instances and that's what uh, the objective of this problem is you have a website and an EC2 and there's a possibility that that pub 
people can hack into the public facing website and then maybe get access to your uh, active control directory domain and then they will be able to access your internal resources of the corporation so you want to separate it out you should never have your public facing resources and anything that could act as a gateway to your company internal resources on the same physical server or even uh, same logical network you should secure them so coming back to option b this will improve the security slightly but another ec2 instance means you have to do management of that ec2 instance you have additional operational overhead so this may be okay but i'll park it let me see if we have another option for now i feel this is not uh, the correct option we will come back to it in case i don't see any better option here now the next one is option c which appears to be wrong to me it says let's use aws directory service to create active directory connector and proxy active directory request to the active domain controller running the current ec2 instance this definitely adds complexity and introduces single point of failure with the connector so if you read this again what is trying to do is we are adding a active directory connector and then proxy active directory request to the domain controller i to be honest i do not understand this solution how it is going to work it appears to be uh, major and whenever you see a uh, lots of services being mismatched in uh, a particular option that is always a wrong answer so i'm going to rule this out i'm looking for something which is much more simpler much more purpose built because i believe this scenario will be a very common scenario and i'm 100% sure that aws will have something much more simpler and purpose built for this particular problem scenario the next one that one also appears to be a lot of services so option d it says let's enable aws single sign on with security assertion markup language to dato federation with the current active directory controller modify the ec2 instance security group to deny public access to active directory now sso will improve some sort of access management but it doesn't address the core security issue of having a domain controller on the public facing instance additionally modification to ec2 security group might still leave domain controller vulnerable if not configured correctly so first of all according to me this option d doesn't solve the problem uh, it doesn't cater to the requirement and it's very complex and we are trying to find a solution for something which is a weak architecture uh, by from security perspective we have ended up on a particular ec2 servers a public facing website and your active directory domain controller and the solution that should help in this case is to separate these things out whereas we are now installing in option d a single sign on so according to me we are even making this overall solution even weaker so let's assume a scenario where a public facing website gets hacked a hacker gets into that website and from there is getting into your active directory controller domain and somehow it gets hold of the single sign on now you are saying by you logging in once that hacker is able to access all the internal resources with the like an internal employee i think it's a very dangerous option definitely it is not going to solve the problem and potentially it could deteriorate the situation so i'm not going to select this one option d is wrong that leaves us with option a let's see what does option a says it says let's use aws directory service to create a manage active directory and uninstall active directory on the current ec2 instance and this appears to be the correct answer to me now why if aws provides an active directory service then they would like you to use it because it's going to be a managed active directory service and you don't have to worry about an physical instance it it will be installed on aws server and you don't have to worry about the servers here so by doing this you are basically getting rid of your directory domain controller from the ec2 instance which is having a public facing website and your problem is solved and i told you earlier as well always aws will ask you questions which is to obviously understand if you have the knowledge of their services and can you solve problems using aws services and preferably by one service only in a very complex scenario of data analytics scenarios where you need multiple services so you do have a service basically use aws active directory service and that's it you don't need anything on your current ec2 instance and that solves your problem so option a is the correct answer this according to me was slightly complicated problem to understand based on the options given but when you solve it you can realize how easy it it was let's do a deeper dive on how this solution is good i guess we have analyzed it at length but uh, we can go through requirement by requirement and see how that requirement is fulfilled by this given option uh, before moving on to that 
आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी थ्री इज ऑप्शन ए यूज ऑफ ए डब्ल्यू एस डायरेक्टरी सर्विस विच इज अ मैनेज एक्टिव डायरेक्टर एंड इंस्टॉल द करंट एक्टिव डायरेक्टरी सॉफ्टवेयर फ्रॉम द करंट ई सी टी इंस्टेंस सो सिक्योरिटी इज की पार्ट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सोल्यूशन बाई यूजिंग दिस सोल्यूशन मैनेज एक्टिव डायरेक्टरी सर्विस यू आर सेपरेटिंग पब्लिक फेसिंग वेबसाइट फ्रॉम इंटरनल एक्टिव डायरेक्टरी डोमेन एंड दैट मिनिमाइज द अटैक सर्फेस एंड इट गिवज यू बेनिफिट्स ऑफ ए डब्ल्यू एस एस सिक्योरिटी बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस second is this is a managed solution so it reduces administrative burden you know you don't have to worry about ec2 instance anymore you don't have to manage the underlying infrastructure that's a standard benefit whenever you go for managed services that's all on this particular question let's move on to the next question for moving on to the next question if you're finding this analysis and discussion useful then please hit that subscribe button if you have not already done it thank you question number 84 amazon aurora was recently selected as the data repository for a company's worldwide e-commerce platform when developers run extensive report they discover that the e-commerce application is performing badly when monthly reports are performed a solution architect notices that read iops and cpu utilization metric spike which approach is most cost effective so we have a classic example where you have an application which is doing transaction processing talking to a database and in this case database is amazon aurora it also has another application the business has another application which is basically a reporting application now because reporting application is talking to the same database the performance of your transactions is getting impacted and this is a classic example of you have a transaction load and a reporting load talking to the same database and reporting load impacting the transaction load even reporting load may be getting impacted however i think users are going to always face and know the problem on the transactional load now what is the solution for this we have done this multiple times whenever you have such a problem you need to separate the load you need to create a replica in this case replica of your amazon aurora database and connect your transactional load oltp load to the main application and connect your reporting load to replica this way you basically separate the load and the problem that you are currently having for performance on oltp transaction disappears that's your answer and let's see if we have this particular answer in our problem and it does you can see we have this particular option available as option b so that is going to be our answer and we will go through each of the option regarding and analyze and understand why those options are incorrect the first one wrong is option a it is saying let's uh, migrate the monthly reporting to amazon redshift in theory this will work redshift is a good fit for you know analytics etc but it's going to be an overkill for reporting application which is not going to be of the order of data warehouse so if we were talking about a data warehouse solution then yes maybe you move tens of aurora database say over every night to redshift and do analytics report over there which are going to be complex but it's not going to be uh, required in this case where you are running some simple reports and uh, it's going to be a super super expensive solution redshift is a super expensive solution as compared to aurora replica so it's wrong it's not cost effective you can see we one of the biggest requirement and it, it's always a requirement that you go for cost effective solutions so option a is ruled out we know option b is the correct answer so we'll skip that we'll come back to it at the end option c says let's uh, migrate the aurora database to a larger instance class now any any time you see solution for performance is uh, vertical scaling which is you know larger instance class or add more servers to it is always a wrong answer in this case also it is a wrong answer because just by putting a larger instance class cannot give you permanent uh, freedom from the uh, performance issues so maybe larger instance in some cases might help but when you have really heavy load and heavy reporting this is not going to help so uh, this is not the solution larger instance in the context of aws architecture principles and well architected framework is never a correct answer at least they are not going to test you on that so option c is wrong so option d says let's increase the provision iops of the aurora instance and if you refer back to the problem solution architect notices that the read iops and cpu utilization metrics spike whenever the reports are running so if you increase the iops it may improve the performance but definitely when you use uh, provision iops is going to be super additional cost and you don't need higher iops throughout you only need when the reports are run and say typically the reports are running in say once a day so you are now increasing the iops forever but only using it when the reports are run so this is not an economical solution from for solving the temporary spike during monthly report so option d is wrong so what we are left with is option b and that's the perfect solution because 
when you create replica obviously your transactional load is going to talk to main database and your reporting load is going to talk to your replica and this will solve the problem and you only pay for storage used by replica so overall it is a cost effective solution so answer for question number 84 is option b migrate the monthly reporting to aurora replica that's it on this question let's move on to the next question question number 85 businesses backup data totals 700 terabyte and is kept in network attached storage in nas storage at its data center the backup data must be available in the event of occasional regulatory inquiries and preserved for a period of seven years the organization has chosen to relocate its backup data from its on-prem data center to aws within one month the migration must be completed the company's public internet connection provides 500 megabits per second capacity what should a solution architect do to ensure that data is migrated and stored at lowest possible cost so what do we have here in terms of problem is we have a company who has 700 terabytes in nas storage and what we need to do is move it to aws and i'm assuming is that the solution that you are going to be moving it to is amazon s3 but we don't know how we are going to move and what we have been told is the network link between the on-premises and aws is 500 mbps and there are other few requirements here which is ultimately you need to move it to say a archive kind of a storage a backup and that will be stored there for seven years after moving you need to make sure that the data is stored for seven years and we don't know again where is what is that solution what is that technology or aws service where we'll move it to all we need to make sure that this the options you use which is basically option for transferring and then option for storing should be cost effective so that overall solution is cost effective also this migration of moving 700 terabytes of data in nas storage moving to aws needs to be completed within one month so that's your another constraint so that's overall problem description and now let's see how we can solve it so how would i solve this problem we have two things one is we need to migrate data to aws from on-prem and then second within aws itself we need to make sure that we store it in the right location and right technology for seven years storage now i'll solve the first problem first i think it, it's easier to solve the seven years storage solution so you have data in s3 we want a cost effective solution for seven years of storage i would go for amazon glacier in this case by and i'll move data from s3 to glacier and we'll leave it there for seven years so that's our solution so the long-term solution for storage would be amazon glacier and the initial part of the solution is how you're going to move 700 terabytes of NAS storage data from on-prem to S3. You have, you can have multiple choices. Uh, if you want to use network, you can use direct link, etc. But I would go for Snowball. We can use Snowball, copy the data into Snowball storage, Snowball, edge, Snowball device, and then move that Snowball device across to AWS and copy the data in S3. I think that is going to be the optimum solution we have one month i think it takes about about 15 days if you are using snowball uh, from the time of ordering to from the time you actually uh, receive it back in aws so i guess from a time time period constraint this solution works from the data size perspective this solution works you can use snowball for much more larger uh, data sets and it is cost effective as well so this is what i will go for in terms of solution let's see what do we have in the actual problem in terms of options and before we jump in there as you can see here uh, this particular chart shows different types of s3 storage classes s3 standard is on the left and s3 uh, glacier deep archive is on the right and moving from left to right the cost reduces but other parameters change in a different way the services on the left side are highly available as you can see they are on three azs whereas zone 1i is one zone only and other bit that changes is you cannot immediately get access to the data so you can say the access time is going from millisecond access to hours minutes and then hours in this case of as you move to the right and glacier is minutes glacier deep archive is almost hours so let, with that background in mind let's jump in into the actual problem solution 
the options. I have highlighted all the options here and I, you can see option A is available here, which is the correct answer according to me for this problem. But we will also analyze other options. So option B says, let's deploy VPN connection between data center and VPC and use CLI to copy data from on-premises to Amazon. You are talking about uploading 700 terabytes over 500 Mbps internet connection is going to take extremely long time. It is definitely going to be more than one month. So for data transfer itself, you are not going to use it. And no corporation would do a migration of data which is as huge as this using VPN. Even if your internet connection time you have allows you to finish it within your you know, time deadline because nobody wants to do migration over that long period. Whenever you know, yes, I'm moving. It's like moving home. You don't move home over 100 days time. You call for a moving services or hire a big truck, put all of your stuff in, in one attempt and then move your stuff. And then other smaller bits, you can bring it later. But you don't do this over a longer period. So option B is wrong. Let's look at other options. Option C. Option C says uh, provision a 500 Mbps AWS direct connect connection and transfer data to Amazon S3. Use a lifecycle policy to transition files to Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive. Now this will work. Direct connect will provide dedicated connection, but the cost is going to be extremely high. So you don't want to be using direct connect for 700 terabytes because it will be significant. Snowball will avoid that cost. It's going to be much cheaper than using a dedicated direct connect connection. And just to do one-time transfer, you don't need to use it as well. So it's wrong. Option D is the next one. It says, let's use AWS data sync to transfer the data and deploy data sync agent on premises. Use the data sync, to, data sync task to copy files from the on-prem NAS storage to S3 Glacier. So data sync might not be ideal option here. It is a massive data set and you will have throttling problem. You will have management overhead. Snowball is a solution which is much better in terms of speed and the cost. So option A is the correct answer for this particular question. You will use AWS Snowball device to transfer the data and then you can use lifecycle policy to transition files from S3 to Glacier Deep Archive. So that's our answer option A, Snowball plus lifecycle policy and Glacier Deep Archive as a solution. You can refer to this AWS article about AWS Snowball just to refresh your memory about you know the usage of it. There is I think a short video on this page somewhere. You can go through it and understand a bit more about AWS Snowball and its usage. So that's it on this question. And I believe this is the last question in this particular episode. I'll see you in the next episode of this series soon. Thank you. This is Exam Tricks and Tips. You're watching the AWS Solution Architect Associate question series. See you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.